Ooh. Okay, Hannah, welcome to Time for a Mojo Injection. Thank you, and thank you for having me. I'm excited to, to chat yeah. everything with you. <laughs> well, it's lovely to meet you, and sorry it's on Zoom, but, you know, we'll, we'll make up for it at some point. I'll get, I'll get down. It's North Eric, you're based, right? It is, yeah. Yeah, so I am just loving seeing all the posts of like wild swimming and um, I can't wait to get back. So we'll have to get a dip together sometime. That would be fab. Mm. Brilliant. I'm keen to come up to the, you guys have been sort of swimming at the lochs and down at the, the river and stuff as well, haven't you? So yeah, we'll have to do swap, swap swims. Yeah, it's good to get a little bit of the reservoir and the, the kind of mountains and the sort of country vibe and then the coastal. It's nice to get a little bit of both, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's a big part of it, actually, the kind of adventure of finding new spots, isn't it? It's really, yeah, something to look forward to, definitely. Yeah. Have you lived in North Berwick long then? Just two years. Ah, where were you before? Edinburgh. Ah. Yeah, Brunsfield and Edinburgh. Oh, so what made you move to the coast? Um, so, well, lots of reasons. Um, a bit of a kind of life rejig and just felt that we were, we just loved being kind of by the sea and felt like we were coming out here a lot and actually why not swap it over and be out here and kind of go into Edinburgh when we need to be in Edinburgh. So um, it's been a brilliant move for us. We've just loved it. It still feels kind of, well, I mean, I'm listening to the rain right now, but generally it feels still quite holiday-ish which is amazing oh so would you say it's enriched your life living near the coast I would yeah yeah for me being by the sea is just oh there's nothing like it for yeah me just being able to I don't know be a bit wild and yeah that sense of freedom and having the the boys here as well it's just lovely yeah it's been it hasn't enhanced my life definitely oh well I'm glad I'm glad you're loving life by the coast I mean it's just so good so how long have you been a coach for how did you get into that because I, I always love having coaches in this space because it's really empowering and you know it really boom 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 really, really gets into the mojo so talk to me about how you landed in this amazing role of coaching one-to-one -one group coaching all that sort of stuff Sure. Okay. So um, it was a few years ago now and it's a kind of various things, but uh, my background is primary education mm -hmm. and my role at the time was to kind of support pupil attainment, but also teacher development to, to do that. And um, just like the sort of data and things that was coming back, it just became really kind of clear to me that, do you know, when a teacher is in a, a good place in their life and um you know they have kind of life outside work like a full life they they feel fulfilled they feel, feel alive then they're in a really um they're well set to kind of really show up for their children in their care and that kind of translated to me as a mum at the time as well I suddenly kind of shifted my thinking a bit and started thinking actually I've got to make a good place you know to bring up my my little people and at the time I was in a place where I felt that I've kind of ticked the boxes do you know everything that I've been striving for I kind of I've done it do you know that the family the we worked hard the family the family the home the job that I really had been my kind of dream job tick 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 and at the time I felt like I should be feeling really happy really like content and fulfilled and really enjoying everything that you know I've been striving for but in actual fact I felt pretty flat I felt um like I want more but I don't know what the more is um there's a real frustration with myself like I, I you know why can't I just be happy like why can't I just like enjoy all this and um at that point and I talk about this quite a bit but I had a conversation at the time with my husband and it was around a weekend so I don't really remember the, the detail but 
ultimately it was about kind of what we're we doing at the weekend and there was kind of different sort of thoughts on the table and I remember just thinking I just don't want to do any of it and him sort of saying what do you want to do and me saying like I just want to feel alive like and I remember so clearly him saying okay so what will make you feel alive and there was just this kind of light bulb moment you know when you have these moments and something clicked and I did suddenly think I'm doing nothing that makes me feel alive at the moment do you know I'm just kind of existing and just kind of getting through the days and to an extent everything was kind of fine like nothing was bad um but that kind of ignited something in me and ultimately like I did go on to be coached myself and went on that kind of journey and actually that conversation I had without realizing it kind of hit on one of my core values and once that that was kind of clear and I started to align my life to my core values so it's a long story but ultimately I realized that do you know I wanted to be able to like share that with others like I like my absolute mission is like I want women to know who they are and really own that and um, understand like what makes them tick and be clear about what they want and not care what society or people think but just lead these like fulfilled lives you know where adventurous like vibrant lives and like then by doing that like teaching their children how to live in a way that's going to make you feel alive and fulfilled you know rather than just striving for this kind of unknown success do you know that actually has nothing to do with what really you know fulfills you I, I got a real sense that you were all about adventure you tagged me in a post a few weeks back with my wild swimming and you were you were really um sort of lifting up women who were yes yes you're doing you know you're doing like you're embracing adventure and stuff and I was like this girl this girl likes to feel alive she's speaking my language here because it's so important isn't it to mix things up and it's so important to feel alive to to really like feel our way through life is, is something we spoke about on a, a previous episode feeling your way through life I really like that like feeling it you know absolutely absolutely and it's different for everybody do you know what makes you feel alive can you be very different from you know your best mate even um so just giving yourself the opportunity to really reflect on who you are and you know what does make you feel good and what you do enjoy and like serving that do you know not not having that as kind of like really last thing on the list but really you know making that a priority did you have toolkits then for yourself as you were on this kind of um, journey of self-discovery and working out who you really were and thinking about your values and stuff? What did you do to unpick all of that? Sure. Okay. So, yeah, the, the real kind of the foundation of it is really was being clear on my values. And, um, do you know, it was a few years ago now and it's all a bit blurred, but certainly like journaling <clears throat> was very quickly became part of that and it's certainly something that I work with with my clients and this idea of even just a couple of minutes in the morning about just being intentional about how you're going to spend your day or the intention that you're going to bring to your day mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely been something that has like, been in my personal toolkit and some like one of the tools that I, I share um, the other thing would be like you know I had no kind of concept you know like maybe even like four years ago about your sort of inner critic and like how your mindset can affect like impacts and the actions that you take so really kind of getting to grips with how to manage my mindset how to manage that inner critic that inner voice has been like so crucial to me feeling much more confident much more um alive and like ultimately just being able to really like get the most from my life and not be kind of limited by that so that's probably my the two kind of main like sort of foundations of you know what kind of keeps me in a really good space yeah that inner critic can just be such an asshole and uh, it's just Absolutely. 
did you sense a pattern as to when the the sort of critical thoughts would come like perhaps after a busy weekend or drinking too much wine or was there a lifestyle pattern that you noticed when it would be a bit noisier yeah that's such a good question yeah absolutely and i'd say this still is do you know we I don't think that it's possible to like silence that inner critic voice. Like we can learn to manage it and work with it and even harness it. But you know, it still comes. So yeah, like tiredness. So certainly for me, like you know, a drinking the night before, like it will almost certainly hit the kind of following afternoon, like really lively. Any time that I'm in, you know, a vulnerable space, and that could be anything from posting a video to um what else could it be i don't know to like organizing like a sort of social thing do you know anything where you're slightly putting yourself out there that inner critic tends to get a lot louder starting a new business like that wow yes that's gonna the inner critic's gonna love that you know because yes. it's gonna be there with all that stuff like oh they know so much more than you like it's all already been done like you don't have enough experience no one's ever going to employ you know all of that stuff like any time that i'm feeling vulnerable you know that's when it's going to be the loudest and that's something i see you know through the women i work with as well yeah so how do you really help people to to silence that inner critic so uh, the first thing is to really like like kind of separate yourself from that inner critic voice mm -hmm. so I certainly just used to kind of think that that was just kind of me and those thoughts were sort of real do you know like um there wasn't any separation so the first thing is really just to start really noticing that voice do you know so when there's like that negative voice comes in like kind of ah like here it is and a really helpful tool to do that, to separate that voice from yourself, because we're not our thoughts, mm -hmm. um, is to name it. So, you know, whatever, whatever works for you, but, you yes. know, mean <laughs> Mandy or whatever, like, you know, no offense to Mandy's, but um, <laughs> to name it, that can really help to separate it from you. And then, so you're kind of noticing it, you're possibly naming it. And then like just understanding why it's there, do you know, like ultimately it's there to try and keep us safe. And it's, you know, back to the caveman days where it was trying to kind of keep us in the cave. You know, there's danger out there, there's saber tooth tigers, stay safe, like don't, you know, don't leave the cave. And it's effectively trying to do that. And it's not about silencing it, because if we could silence it, everybody would have silenced it. It's about saying, do you know what? I hear you, like, thank you for trying to keep me safe, but I've got this. Yeah. So it's like that kind of process of noticing it and recognising it, that it's separate from us. And then that kind of, you know, thank you and I've got this. And then the other side of it is starting to think about harnessing that voice and starting to think about, um, you know, retraining our brains. Like, like a lot of us will have like these negative affirmations kind of on repeat like whatever it is like you're too old like you're fat um you know any you know any critic will pick up on any kind of vulnerability do you know so it's starting to think okay let's flip that and instead of telling ourselves that like let's think of a really positive kind of affirmation so that's when we're starting to harness that inner critic voice and um you know using affirmations can be a really powerful tool in doing in doing that yeah i mean for you would you say like the morning's the best time to to get your affirmations would you would you recommend like actually standing in the mirror and saying like i am powerful i am whatever you want to say or would you would you say it's best to do it morning afternoon and night or <laughs> Do you know, like with all of these things, I think that you've got to do it in a way that works for you. Like if the thought of standing in front of the mirror just kind of leaves you cold, then do you know, that's probably not for you. Um, I think that, you know, a tool is going to work when it feels good to do it and it fits in with your life. So like often it's about maybe having like one kind of like or a couple of affirmations that, you know, you're working with 
And like, do you know what? Probably ideally, first thing in the morning is a great time because that's kind of setting your, you know, your mindset for the day ahead. Whereas if you do at the end of the day, you've kind of the day sort of passed, you know, so you're maybe not going to get as much of a positive impact from it. But yeah, it's got to work with your life. And with regards to kind of staying in front of the mirror, like, do you know, it kind of depends where you are. Like for me now, it's enough to just kind of like, read it over in my journal do you know just as a really quick like literally take seconds reminder just to kind of put me in that more positive like headspace do you know like there's negative affirmations and you know there's positive and you know if you're constantly kind of saying to yourself um you know whatever it is like i'm exhausted and you know i've got no time you're taking action to kind of make that actual reality yeah. Whereas if I just decide, actually, you know, I'm alive and I'm full of energy and I manage my time incredibly well, that that makes you take diff a different set of actions, you know? Like, suddenly you're like, yeah, I'm alive, I'm full of energy. Like, you know, you start to kind of, like, think differently about things and, mm -hmm. yeah, take different actions. So your mindset really promotes, like, a set of actions and you ultimately can choose, like, you know, if it's negative or positive to an extent. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And it's just getting that clear. And as you say about the journaling as well, it's just getting that clarity, isn't it, to what's going on. And, you know, if you've got a bit of emotion that you need to sort of journal out or you've got some blocks. Absolutely. Oh, it can be so powerful. It's, ultimate, it's kind of like you being your own coach, really. It's just giving you that headspace to, yeah, as you say, get clarity, get clear on what you're thinking yeah it's quieting down the noisy mind and letting your inner whether you believe it's a soul or a heart space or you know whatever it is it's, it's connecting to that deeper place isn't it absolutely and people get you know worried about kind of journaling like i don't know what it looks like and am i doing it right and it's like when i'm talking about journaling i am literally just talking about just like write what's in your head just get it out on paper like that alone well it makes you feel so much better do you know just to get that you know that you know when your mind gets just full and it's just all jumbled and you're you're completely like losing focus and just feel like you're all over the place just getting that down on paper will give you a sense of relief and a sense of clarity how do you know what's from the racing mind just say you're journaling right how do you know what's from the racing mind and what's from like a deeper place of wisdom um, so I think that like the first step would just be to kind of like pour it out if you like like just kind of do that brain dump uh -huh. and then I think when you're reading through that like you can get you know there's almost like two stages there so if you imagine that kind of brain dump but if you allow yourself to kind of continue to write like generally like that will come then that kind of the more kind of wisdom place will come but the wisdom's often hidden under all the kind of jumble if you like do you know so get rid of the jumble get that out and the clarity will follow <laughs> yeah the clarity because we've all got this amazing wisdom this inner wisdom right absolutely that can get ignored and that's sad yeah completely and we need that quiet time and we need that you know headspace to allow us to kind of tap into that yeah it's like going through the layers almost you know going through the yeah. right the noisy mind stepping back right as you said earlier we are not our thoughts naming them using techniques to try and right and then just coming down and down and down and then sometimes when you just know you know you've got that sweet spot where oh yeah i've got it now i know what i need to do this is what i need to do or and and sometimes people can have guilt so for people that are feeling guilty because perhaps what they really want might hurt someone else, whether it's a relationship, a work thing, or what advice would you give to people that are sort of torn between their desires and their people pleaser? Yeah, desires and people pleaser. So like, ultimately, like when we come back to our values, like that starts to kind of shift things. Um, so if we imagine like, so for example, I talk about how I got into surfing when I was 37 and it's something that had always been on my kind of list of things to do. 
And for whatever reason, I'd never made it a priority. And then I was kind of 37 with really young children. Like, um, do you know, I can't like spend half a day like out learning to, do you know, I should be with my children. Like that's what a good mum does. Um, and, you know, like getting really clear on my values allowed me to understand that actually for me to personally be the best mum I can be, I need to serve those values. I need to go out and do stuff that is going to get me back to me and you know like me being who I am um so perhaps it's kind of like I'd be scared of sort of judgment in that space but actually when I come back to the values that judgment's gone I am absolutely clear about what I'm doing why I'm doing it and why it's important and why I'm absolutely you know like backing myself and confident in my actions I love that. How do people know what the top values are, though? Just say you've picked 10. That, that can okay. be a bit confusing, right? Because you're like, mm -hmm. oh, but that value might clash with that one or whatever. Do you believe yeah. you'd have like maybe a core three or what's your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. So I would say, um, yeah, three probably max, just because, you know, you want them to be easily accessible and you want to ultimately kind of remember them and come to them with ease. Also, a lot of the time, I'm actually only working really with one value. Do you know, that's the one that's at the forefront of my mind and the other two would like maybe take a back seat. But just having one can, it can be life changing. Like it can completely change your thinking. So yeah, I would definitely go with a smaller number. If you kind of do a values exercise, and there are lots of values exercise on, exercises online, which is brilliant. You know, if you do do one of those and you end up with a huge list of values, what I would suggest is just try to maybe group them into three groups, you know, and then like pick out the value that kind of encompasses that group for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Cause there's, it can be a bit overwhelming, right? You know, yeah. certain, absolutely. that people please their side as well. could be like, well, I want to be kind and I want to pick love and I want to pick compassion. And <laughs> but then oh, as you, if you group them, they're kind of similar. <laughs> yeah. And also like with that, like you're absolutely right. It's, it's almost like, oh, I can't not have that value. Like, what does that say about me if I don't have love as a value, do you know? And there can be real kind of anxiety around that, which I completely understand. And what I would say is that you want a core value that's going to really kind of enhance your life, do you know? So actually, maybe if you are like really looking for love in your life, like love would be potentially an amazing core value to have if that's going to get you really kind of taking action and, you know, serving that need and perhaps, um, you know, getting step, get you stepping outside your comfort zone as well. Perhaps if you've kind of really shied away from putting yourself out there, that could be a really powerful value to have. Um, but just kind of having love because, um, you know, you love your family, probably not going to have that much of an impact, you know. So you really want to choose a value that kind of makes you feel a bit like excited, you know, like that's really when you think of all the different areas of your life, like, oh my gosh, like what would it mean if, you know, adventure was my core value? Like what would this year look like, do you know, or creativity, like what impact would that have on my relationships, like on my work life, you know, there's so many, there's so many kind of parts of our lives. So you really are looking for the value that really kind of fires you up yeah i like that i like that and i think we you know creativity and play and imagination and adventure are all things that can kind of get lost as we grow up yeah. and it's it, it's challenging that and just saying well that's rubbish who said you know I, i'll have people say to me oh you know you're you're doing that while swimming that's ridiculous or you know oh, oh head in the clouds or you know you just hear silly yeah. things like that and it's like but why why not? Why, why can't we keep playing and just be silly? And, you know, you don't have to feel stupid if you go and buy some roller skates or something like that. Or, Absolutely. yeah, it's so important. Yeah, and it's so important to really embrace who you are. Do you know, we can really lose that, like, sight of that, like, as we kind of, you know, kind of conform to what we're told as we grow up do you know like the successes you know I don't know whatever it was when you were growing up like whether it's kind of getting married or having a certain type of job 
Um, so it's really like an opportunity to come back to who you actually are and embrace that side of you. And actually, when you do that, that means that, you know, you can buy the roller skates and just go out with them and not really give a fuck what anyone thinks because you know why you're doing it, you know? Because it makes you feel alive, it's, you know? And that's just so empowering. Yeah, it's that deeper place rather than letting the ego and stuff. Oh, yeah. they're going to think, what are they going to be thinking about me when I rock up with a skateboarder, <laughs> you know, whatever. Yeah, Who cares? absolutely. Who yeah, cares? Exactly. So how do we care less about what people think? So uh, I feel like I'm sort of coming back to it. Yeah, it is that thing of we care less by caring more about what we think. Like, what do I actually think? Do you know? Like, and that's coming back again to our kind of values. And do you know, ultimately, like, we get to choose how we spend our time. We get to choose how we spend our days. And how we spend our days is ultimately how we spend our lives, do you know? Mm-hmm. So, and we don't, you know, it doesn't make somebody else happy. And in fact, we can never kind of make anybody else happy. Like the best thing that I believe that we can do for ourselves, but also for all those around us and actually like our communities as a whole mm-hmm. is to really like, you know, be who we are. And by doing that, like we bring so much more value and so much more energy to the world, you know? Like somebody in a really good place who's serving their own values, I believe they're so much more likely to have a positive impact on those around them, so much more likely to have a positive impact on their community. Do you know, they'll have so much more energy. They're, you know, they're so beyond kind of like, you know, success being about a thing. Like it's about like, you know, having an impact and, you know, making change and all that stuff. Yeah, and I think it's really cool what you said about caring more about what you think and what your truth is, because it's so easy to, you know, be swept in by, you know, negative comments from perhaps those friends and family members, or you need to, you know, when you're going to get a real job or when you're going to do this, or, you know, these negative comments that may come from other people's opinions, but they might not even be their opinions, it might be someone further down the line, like a grandparent, or they've, you know, they've grown with that. How can we, would you say the best way to encourage those to live out theirs is by living out ours as an example? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And it can be, you know, like when you first start aligning your life to your values and you kind of embracing that, that way of living effectively, do you know, like not everyone around you will probably be delighted about that. Um, do you know, like there can be times when that's hard, do you know, it's saying kind of no to things, but you being very clear like why that is, like if it's like, you know, a big night out, but actually for me it's more important to be getting up early and being able to go and go on an adventure with my family or whatever it is. Um, I thought, yeah, <laughs> Sorry, it's totally got it in my head. Um, I'm feeling you though, I'm feeling exactly what you're saying. Yeah, it's like, like owning it, isn't it? It's totally owning it, yeah. And you know, like people around you, like there's always that fear. There's always a level of fear, and you know, you're talking about kind of, you know, taking risks or doing things a bit differently. Like they want to keep you safe, you know. So that kind of concern or that kind of, oh, you know, you shouldn't like don't leave your job. You know, you've got a great job, like you shouldn't, you know, all of that stuff. Like it comes from a place of love. So Mm -hmm. really, like that's okay for them to wanting to be keep you safe but ultimately like you know it's it's your life and like I do think there is a responsibility there as well to just really own do you know who you are and what you want and to live that yeah that's really really empowering like check yourself and you know we have the power to do this we have you know the choice to to be brave and to to take it back to those values and to every day as you say wake up right how do I want to show up today what do I want to get out of today what would what would the fears be and how can I silence them and just bash on anyway you know it's um it's so empowering for people so empowering do you do a lot of meditation or spiritual practice what's your kind of apart from the journaling and stuff have you got some other activities you like so no to be totally honest 
no, I feel that the spirituality side of things, it's actually maybe the kind of next stage of my journey. And I certainly had a, a Reiki session kind of like maybe October, November last year. That uh, like quite a profound effect on me, and that definitely got me kind of thinking more about that sort of spiritual place, or more about the idea of kind of healing. Um, but do you know? I think that for me, like journaling, probably is a bit of a spiritual practice. Do you know? It is that kind of um, like does serve that, but it's definitely something that I'm interested in. Do you know? Like I just. I just think there's amazing stuff out there, do you know? I just, it's so exciting to kind of learn and so many people doing awesome things. Like it's just, yeah, really, really exciting. There's also maybe actually an element of, like I think there's something about cold water. I'm quite a kind of, do you know, a bit of a, I don't know if it's a spiritual experience, like, you know, but there's something quite transformative about that, I think. I think so. To me, it's one of the most spiritual moments for me is being in the cold water. Um, absolutely. And it's funny what you say about Reiki, because I grew up in a very spiritual environment. So I've always had faith and I've always believed in the spiritual world and stuff and felt things really, really strongly. And uh, when I had Reiki, I had a few different sessions and it blew like it was like blew my little mind and um some of the things the reiki teacher said and stuff were like bang on um and i don't know if it all got a bit much for me there was a lot going on but i, I took on well not long after that but i was basically feeling stuff and all this energy it was just and people were saying to me i think you've got a gift in this and that and that and I would know things that I shouldn't know. Like if someone said, oh, my family member's sick, I would know which family member and what happened. And um, if someone said, I've got some news for you, like it happened the other day, a friend was like, I've got some news. And uh, it's something you would never guess. And I just, I was walking and I just text what I thought it was. And they were like, why on earth did you say that? And then at first I was like, oh, they're going to think I'm so stupid thinking that's what it was. But it turns out that was, was what it was. So the intu I'm at a place where intuition is strong, but the spiritual stuff is probably strong, strong, strong too. And part of me is scared of it because I did get unwell, but I don't, I'm not blaming me getting unwell just on that. There was a lot going on. There was an awful lot going on at the time. Um, but I do think it was a bit out of body for me and that may have contributed to the hypomania. So there's a balance between looking after our physical body and doing the spiritual practices, be it journaling, be it cold swimming, be it whatever you get that clarity. And then there's this, the energy side, the stuff we can't see, you know, and it could just be thinking about chakras and Reiki and thinking about, you know, some Reiki masters can tell you exactly what's going on and the chakra and stuff like, oh, have you got a big thing in your career next week? Because your orange chakra or whatever it is, is really vibrating because we're all energy. So I think it's a, it's an incredible, you know, you're seeing you're on the edge of it. It's an incredible experience, but I've spoke to a lot of people because I, not just mental health researcher, I'm very much a spiritual health researcher, but a lot of people have had either breakdowns at some point or breakthroughs. <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating world, um, but it's a, it's a personal journey for every, everyone. And I don't know, you, you said when you had Reiki, was it quite a mind blowing experience for you? Did you, or was it just- so my series of it was um, that I went along to this sort of session which I thought was kind of going to give me a massage. I knew that the, the lady I was seeing did Reiki as well but I was, it was kind of November time last year and I was, so generally I don't really suffer with anxiety. It's something that I did when I was younger but now I don't really suffer with it. I'm really lucky but just this period of time like I just started to be aware that I was having kind of social anxiety and I went um, along to that I just wanted to do something to kind of make me feel better and she was amazing and she sat me down and we kind of and a big part of it was probably the talking side of things 
and she kind of suggested that I might be having like sort of being triggered as maybe having an extreme reaction to that sort of social thing of feeling like left out or feeling like I was leaving people out with all the kind of funny regula regulations and stuff and um, she kind of floated this idea that I might be being like triggered by something that had happened in my childhood mm -hmm. and when she said that I was sort of thinking oh I'm not really sure anything's happened in my childhood but you know we'll go with it and then you know then she started to do this sort of Reiki work and I think that she'd I can't absolutely remember but I think she asked me to kind of think in my childhood and it kind of felt like left out and oh my goodness totally came to me like as clear as day and I think that I kind of um I had to almost like speak to myself as like a child aged about sort of nine mm -hmm. and almost kind of go through this process of making that like feel safe and feel okay and um honestly I left just feeling like just a sense of total lightness like just back to myself so yeah it was amazing and just this kind of feeling that my goodness do you know like we've got such kind of um well I say we but actually do you know a Reiki session wouldn't be accessible to everybody um but there are tools out there that can help us do you know like and actually everybody should have access to stuff that can help um and I just felt like quite empowered by that to know that there are different things out there that you know can be part of our kind of lives and we can use to support ourselves yeah and it's funny what you say about lightness that feeling of lightness that can come from an experience like that right and you you'll hear people as well speaking about moments of light where they feel light all around them um, and that was certainly something else i experienced at that time because it was really really diving into it and it was lots of stuff happening but feeling like bright lights and stuff i mean but if you were to break that down you know because they'll call it light work or shadow work and and trying to um accept your dark sides as well and accept perhaps things from childhood where you've got this resistance this fear you need to feel safe and all of that stuff and it's like pouring that love on and then you know bringing more light and it's like there was something I heard earlier today it was just something simple like you know the light's always there like so even on a day like today when it's well in Edinburgh it's certainly been pouring it down and really really windy but then the sun will break and then my, my daughter this morning oh there's a rainbow mom and just really looking to nature and and using it as a reminder for the lightness that's there you know, it's, um, I love that word, just that feeling of lightness is such a powerful thing, right? Absolutely. And just kind of lightness in like, in what we're doing, do you know, like we can get kind of stressed and worried about things and sometimes just bringing the intention of kind of lightness to that, like how can we make it feel lighter? Like, do you know, you've got a big meeting tomorrow. How can we bring lightness to it? Like, yeah. you know, that, that can be really helpful yeah yeah because we don't want to feel heavy we don't want to mm. feel the knots we don't i you know i miss going for massages so much <laughs> i don't know about you but it's like part of my therapy my therapy has always been going for a massage and just getting those knots and and just oh i miss it so badly oh there's so many things isn't there? we just totally took for granted and it's going to be amazing to be able to do these things i think my therapy is just being around a table you know with my girlfriends just being able to have that chat about nothing and everything and well, that is <laughs> I know I know it's it's so important and it, and we we've got hope right it's been a dark time for many and we've had to really come through different challenges but there is that light there right you know it's it's getting better and it's it's keeping hold of that and and just doing what you can each day to break it down and to to, to bring a bit light to your day even in dark times like the light is still there and there's so so many tools for us you know there's so many tools and we might not be able to yeah. go and get reiki and things like that but 
there is still so much available. Do you have any books yeah, you recommend? Or obviously I would say podcasts, time for a mojo injection, everyone should listen to this. But you know, if you got like books, podcasts, uh, anything that you would be like, yes, this will fire you up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so Jay Shetty, who you, um, to be honest, not so much his book, but he's done certainly a couple of podcasts with um, Rangan Chatterjee on Feel Better, Live More. Um, so his, um, what else is there? Gosh, there's just so many things, aren't it? I'd like anything like, I mean, I'm sure that people have kind of listened to this stuff, but any Brenny Brown stuff, like her TED Talk, all that stuff, brilliant. Um, if you're kind of running your own business, marry Folio could be really good. Like everything is figureitable. That's yeah. a really like useful, practical book of all my kind of mindset and things that can really help you um i've got a coaching group at the moment and i kind of long-term coaching group and they are all absolutely raving about the gift which is by i think it's edith edgar and um they're sending through some some quotes and things today and that sounds like it could be a really like beautiful empowering read i'm actually searching around because there was a quote kind of all about taking your power back and things that was really, um, you know, touching. What else? I, I, there's a lot on Rangan Chatterjee's podcast. I don't yeah. know if that's one that you listen to, but there's yeah. loads of great stuff on that. That Peter Crone, the mind, Ar- mind architect. Oh, right. That's, that's uh, on Chatterjee's podcast. He's on Chatterjee's, yeah. The mind architect. The mind architect, Peter Crone. I'll listen um, to that one. Yeah, really good stuff. But yeah, there's loads of um, super inspiring stuff. And it's brilliant, like loads of coaches as well. Like, it's like loads of people doing amazing things like around Edinburgh and things as well, which is just brilliant. It's so, it's so cool. I just finished Jay Shetty's book, Think Like a Monk, actually. And, um, what did you think? Yeah, it was cool. A lot of stuff I, I knew already, but... yeah he he's just he's just nice i had it on audible he's just nice to listen to and stuff um so i I enjoyed it it was quite a nice easy listen um yeah what about you did you did you you know i didn't so much get into his book i think that maybe similar to you it was quite a lot that you kind of have come across maybe already but i did love his podcast um with i think that was a feel better live more he does have his own one as well um yeah, I think that's yeah, the one wellness in the world or something like that. Um, maybe that came from, you know, the spiritual time in the monastery. Um, you know, he's, he's really gone. He's really done a lot of inner work. And when you yeah. do the inner work, you know, it does have an impact. You know, if you, oh, absolutely. you know, you do all that work on intentions and values and meditation and, and really visualization and I guess visualization is something that's quite important to you as a coach right it's powerful yeah Yeah, really really powerful do you believe in the law of attraction or anything like that or what's your thoughts there yeah I do definitely um yeah absolutely it's not something that you know I'm, I'm not particularly manifesting kind of coach but do I believe in the law of attraction absolutely Mm-hmm. yeah and we do it you know um yeah I mean it's a really simple example do you know as a teacher you're always taught to kind of really like you look for the good do you know so if you've got your class sitting around you you're not kind of picking out the child that's not looking that's kind of focusing you pick out the child that's you know for that moment they are really like focusing and you know and doing really well like that's what you're looking for the moment of goodness and then you know, they're much more inclined to do that behaviour again and everybody around them sort of seeing that, you know. Or there's a lovely bit actually in, you know, The the Secret and there's a documentary on Netflix and I think it's a really good example in that. And it's kind of a husband and wife and their husband comes home and their wife's kind of like, I can't remember exactly, but say she's sort of like, oh, like, you know, you didn't put the bins out and, you know, everything's kind of rubbish, you know. And you can just sort of see like, He's just delivering more of that kind of rubbish sort of attitude. Or he comes home and she is, I don't know if this is a big example actually, because I think, you know, there's something in this kind of women-man thing. But anyway, she is like 
more positive and really kind of focusing on the good stuff and he is much more likely to kind of do more of that you know yeah, really. yeah. yeah. it's so true you get what you focus your energy on right yeah you, absolutely total but it can be so hard and it can again be a daily practice because you can feel yeah, the mind absolutely. going the mind's judging people or it's you know well oh, they didn't do that and that and actually mm, okay let me take a step back and actually let's focus on what they did do right and the yeah. same self you know if it's the inner critic let's focus on what you have done right and and you do you get more of that back and you give and you give and you get stuff back you it's it, it's powerful it's very very yeah. powerful and yeah you, I totally agree yeah and when you see good things happening and you see it working it's totally worth doing that daily practice whatever it is to, yeah. to shift the mindset and to get to yeah. a place absolutely and visualization that is in effect kind of manifesting your your future do you know so we can't like you've got to be clear on what you kind of want and what that looks like to be able to make that happen do you know and by coming back to that visualization you're putting yourself in the headspace where actually it's kind of almost happened and then it's much more kind of like that idea of okay what actions do I need to take do you know now to get there um so whenever you're coming back to that picture that visualization it's really promoting action do you know that you're much more likely to take yeah yeah because it can be easy but we do need to we need to take action don't we we have to absolutely yeah some things you need to almost obsess about for a little bit uh, depending on what it is but it's just because it can be so easy and I don't know if procrastination is a form of um kind of self sort of you know if the inner critic do you think procrastination is a, a form of kind of like poor self-esteem or something like we're pushing it away I think it could probably be a couple of things like I think there's often like a sense of perfectionism in that do you know like it's almost like a fear of kind of not getting it perfect so people can often procrastinate until like the last minute where they can only do the best that they can do in that kind of given amount of time because otherwise do you know they're just gonna it's gonna take their lives you know it's gonna take so much energy so I think that is often something to do with kind of fear like absolutely it can be a mindset thing like um yeah definitely and you know sometimes there is just nothing better and we'll all have experienced it of that just like take that little bit of action do you know mm -hmm. like but even if like your your room your bedroom's a mess it's closed on the floor just take one tiny bit of action, pick up one thing off the floor and put it away. And what is really likely to happen is that you'll probably kind of start like picking other bits up and things like that. But sometimes things can feel so kind of big and so overwhelming that the best place to start is just something really tiny, like that tiny bit of action. Mm -hmm. And you know what, if you only do that one thing, you've done it and you'll get a sense of achievement for having done that one kind of thing do you know that's a win brilliant um and you're starting to kind of change your mindset into somebody who, who just like oh my gosh I just can't manage well to somebody who is I take action and you know mm -hmm. so it's that kind of shift in mindset as well yeah I love it I love it do you have a favorite quote for people um yes Oh, there's a couple. I love, I do really like my, like, you are not your thoughts, you are not your feelings. These are the clouds and you are the blue sky. So that idea of you not being your thoughts, you're not being your feelings. Um, the other quote that I love is actually a Hillary Quint, um, Clinton quote. Oh, can I remember? It's so good. Do you know what? I don't know if I can. Oh, how frustrating. Um, Hillary if, it comes to, <laughs> if it comes to me, I'll like go. No. Well, I'm actually, I, like, I'm having a really quick this my Insta. Here we go. Oh no, that's the Brenny Brown one. So many good quotes. Oh, Glennon Doyle. I didn't mention Glennon Doyle when I was talking about um, 
things to recommend, massively recommend her book. Okay, this is the Hillary Clinton one. You have just one life to live. Own it, claim it, live it, do the best you can with it. Love that. Yeah. Own it, girl. Own it. Absolutely. It, it's so motivating honestly I, i've really um had a proper mojo injection from all these tips and i'll i'll do a little blog about it too on mummyjojo.com so i'll send you that um but i always ask what is your tune to to for people to put on their playlist this week to to boost the mojo up have you got a song or two you could recommend um so oh my goodness so at the moment i am loving oh gosh my memory is so dreadful like i, I love it actually how you say, pronounce their name but haim or haim mm -hmm. h-a-i-m mm -hmm. now i'm in it da, 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 da. it's such a good song i absolutely love it so yeah that's my that's my one to add to the playlist Don't what have any oh, what? this the song what's the the name of the song it's now I'm in it. Now I'm in it. Now I'm in it, right. Now I'm in it, yeah. She and I always love Rise Up as well by Andrew D. Do you know that one? Um, oh, oh, and I'll rise up. And I'll rise up. Is it that one? Yeah, yeah love that, yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, is that explained? Um, well, that was it playing. <laughs> I'm going to be all about that. And um, honestly, it's amazing. Have you got a favourite place for people to contact you? I'll put your dates in the show notes. But have you got, are you more on Instagram, or Facebook or blog? Yeah, definitely, definitely hang out on Instagram. An Instagram girl. So yeah, you can find me over there. It's Hannah Buck and Coaching. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for all these wonderful tips and yeah you're awesome so sending you massive mojo injections and i will look forward to a swim with you very soon hopefully come on thank you come, come on oh, absolutely thanks so much for having me george that's brilliant to, to chat with you no it's been amazing it's been absolutely amazing mm. ah. Thank you so much. Right. Hopefully see you soon for that spin.